In this lesson, I'll show you how to reduce nonlinear equations to linear form using Bernoulli's equation. Sometimes a first order differential equation that is nonlinear can be expressed in linear form. One type of nonlinear equation easily reducible to linear form is one in which the right side contains a power of y as a factor, an equation known as the Bernoulli equation, shown generally right here. Just as before, p and q represented in this equation are functions that are exclusively in terms of x. We solve such an equation by making the substitution z is equal to y to the power of 1 minus n. The function that they want us to work with in this video is solve y prime plus y over x is equal to x squared y to the power of 6. And notice that I've given it a difficulty rating of hard. The reason why I've given it this rating is because there are a lot of steps. The first thing that I want to do to solve this differential equation is convert y prime into dy over dx and dedicate the right side so that it's in terms of x only. And I can do that by dividing all of these terms by y to the power of 6. Here's what I mean by that. Let's start by changing this to dy over dx, dy over dx, and then keep in mind that I'm dividing each of these terms by y to the power of 6 so that the right side will no longer have y to the power of 6. So dividing this by y to the power of 6, this term, y over x divided by y to the power of 6, and on the right side, we now have x squared. I'm going to simplify the left side just a little bit more, and I should end up with 1 over y to the power of 6 dy over dx, and this part should become 1 over x y to the power of 5 is equal to x squared. Now another way to represent this term is to write down y to the power of negative 5 over x instead of 1 over x times y to the power of 5. And I'll show you what I mean. Now that I've done that, I'll set up my z value. And remember, z is equal to y to the power of 1 minus n. So I'll write down z is equal to y to the power of 1 minus, and if you look at the original differential equation, y was raised to 6, so our n value is 6 z is equal to y to the power of negative 5. Therefore, I can substitute this with z. And I have 1 over y to the power of 6 dy over dx plus z over x is equal to x squared. My next step is to take the derivative of the left and the right side of this equation with respect to x. And if I do that, I'll end up with dz over dx. That's the left side. And on the right side, We'll subtract this by 1 and take this negative 5 and multiply it to y to the power of negative 6 dy over dx. What I want to do is isolate for dy over dx so that I can substitute its content into here. And the way I do that is I divide both sides by negative 5 y to the power of negative 6. Let's see what happens if we do that. If I divide this side by that, it will cancel out. And on the left side, we'll have negative 5 y to the power of negative 6 is equal to dy over dx. This will simplify to y to the power of positive 6 dz over negative 5 dx is equal to dy over dx. So I'll substitute this left side into here. And if you do that correctly, you should end up with 1 over y to the power of 6. That part stays the way it is. And instead of putting the negative underneath, I'll just put it at the top just for convenience sake. Negative y to the power of 6 dz over 5 dx plus z over x is equal to x to the power of 2. y to the power of 6 cancels out with this expression, leaving us with negative dz over 5 dx plus z over x is equal to x squared. What I want to do next is multiply the whole equation by negative 5, and that will clear this 5 in the denominator. So if I multiply this by negative 5, this will go away. I end up with dz over dx. Now multiplying this by negative 5, I get negative 5 z over x is equal to negative 5 x squared. Keep in mind that our linear first order equation should look like this, where I have dy over dx plus p and q, which represent expressions that are exclusively in terms of x, 
then y, and then y to the power of n. But in our case, it's z. So what I want to do next is break this down, this term, into factors so that I can easily identify my p and easily identify my q. Here's what I mean. I have dz over dx plus z times 5 over x, and make sure that that's negative. This represents this expression. It's just broken down into factors. And on the right side, it stays the way it is. Therefore, this is my p, and this is my q. And the reason why finding the p is important is because we use the p value to find the integrating factor. The integrating factor is defined as r is equal to e to the power of the integral of p dx. Now you see its importance. r is equal to e to the power of the integral of negative 5 over x dx. I need to now find the integral of negative 5 over x, which is not hard to do. I'll take this negative 5 out. And now all I have to do is take the integral of 1 over x, which is ln absolute of x. So I have e as the base to the power of negative 5 ln x, and that's equal to r. Notice that this negative 5 can be represented as a power of x. r is equal to e to the power of ln x to the power of negative 5. This e and this ln will cancel out, leaving us with x to the power of negative 5 as our r value. Using this integrating factor, I'll multiply this by each of the terms within this differential equation. So I'll multiply this, dz over dx, by x to the power of negative 5. Next, I'll multiply plus z bracket negative 5 over x times x to the power of negative 5. And this term, negative 5x to the power of 2, once again, by x to the power of negative 5. The integral of the left side is our integrating factor, x to the power of negative 5, times z. x to the power of negative 5 times z. And if you don't believe me, use the product rule, and you'll find out that if you use the product rule for these two factors, you'll end up with the top. All we have to do now is find the integral of the right side. That part is not hard to do. First, I will simplify this expression. x to the power of 2 times x to the power of negative 5 gives us the integral of negative 5 over x to the power of 3. And that is in terms of dx, because technically we're supposed to multiply each of these terms by dx to clear out this dx. Pulling out this negative 5 and flipping this, where it becomes negative 5, the integral of x to the power of negative 3 dx, add 1 to this becomes negative 2. Divide the expression by negative 2. We have negative 5 over negative 2, x to the power of negative 2, which goes at the bottom, plus c. So technically it's 5 over 2 times x squared plus c on the right side, and I'll place that here. 5 over 2x squared plus c. This represents the solution, but remember it's in terms of z, so what we will do is solve for z and substitute what we set z as originally. We can solve for z by dividing both sides by x to the power of negative 5. We have z is equal to 5 over 2 times x to the power of 2 times x to the power of negative 5, which is x to the power of negative 3. And over here we have plus c over x to the power of negative 5. Simplifying the right side, this becomes 5x to the power of 3 over 2. This becomes x to the power of 5 times c. And this becomes 1 over y to the power of 5, because remember, we set z as y to the power of negative 5. And that's the equivalent expression. And that is how to reduce nonlinear equations to linear form using Bernoulli's equation.